Hey friends, today we'll be covering the topic approach to pancytopenia. In the slide, we'll be touching on the following topics. So let's start. Pancytopenia, as we know, is the reduction in all the three cell lines, namely the hemoglobin, the TLC and the platelet count. When the hemoglobin is less than 10 gram per deciliter, the leukocyte count, which is expressed in terms of for absolute neutrophilic count that is less than 1500 per millimeter cube and platelet count less than 1 lakh per millimeter cube. This is defined as pancytopenia. When any of the two, any of the two cell lines are decreased, we call it bicytopenia and not pancytopenia. Now pancytopenia is divided into two types, the central pancytopenia and the peripheral. Central when there is decreased production and peripheral when there is increased destruction of the cells. Central pancytopenia, we know the bone marrow is at fault. So the bone marrow can be hypocellular, cellular or infiltration. So a hypocellular bone marrow means the bone marrow is not forming the cells. So it can be a bone marrow failure syndrome. It can be acquired case of aplastic anemia or infections in the body like parvovirus, CMV and HIV that decreases the uh, production from the bone marrow. A cellular bone marrow is when the bone marrow is forming cells but they are abnormal like in case of acute leukemia, myelodysplastic syndrome, vitamin B12, autoimmune disease like SLE and storage disorders. Bone marrow infiltration is, is when the normal functioning of the bone marrow is hampered due to infiltration from the outside. It could be due to infection or abnormal cells like in case of HLH. Peripheral uh, pancytopenia is we know that there is increased destruction that, that could be case of uh, autoimmune destruction due to SLE, portal hypertension and hyperspinism le uh, leading to a destruction or, or due to infections like Kala Azar, malaria or enteric. Now the history related to the common symptoms. So we know when there is decreased hemoglobin or RBC, there will be pallor and fatigue. When there will be decrease in TLC count, there will be increase in infections and the symptoms will be fever. And when there will be decrease in platelet count, there will be increased bleeding tendencies. With superficial bleeds like petechias and purpura seen. Other pointers that you can get from history is history of weight loss, decreased appetite, bone pain, swelling in the neck, history of any blood transfusion or radiation exposure, point towards malignancy like ALL, AML and lymphoma, whereas in history of any recent blood transfusion, history of any radiation, drug or chemical exposure with family history of consanguity, points towards aplastic anemia or any bone marrow failure syndromes. And if there is history of any recent uh, blurring of vision, stroke, altered sensorium or seizure, then this point towards intracranial bleed. Other pointers in history is in history of vegetarian diet, poor complementary feeding, poor socioeconomic status, history of hyperpigmentation, tremor and developmental regression, all point towards megaloblastic anemia. History pointing towards particular infections like tuberculosis, enteric malaria or features of sepsis and DICs present, then it point towards infectious etiology. Other pointers in history is history of any rashes, joint pain or history suggestive of any multi-system involvement, then it points towards the autoimmune etiology like SLE. If there is history of jaundice, blood transfusion or history suggestive of portal hypertension, melina or hematemesis, then it points towards chronic liver disease and portal hypertension. And if you get a repeated history of passing dark colored urine or mild jaundice more so uh, during awakening, then it points towards proximal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Now moving to examination, general physical examination, you can find pallor, ictus, clubbing, cyanosis, lymphadenopathy, edema. Finding of a short stature or severe acute malnutrition point towards a nutritional cause or failure to thrive due to chronic infections also. In these pictures, we see typical uh, facial features like you see peculiar bird face, flat facial profile, microcephaly, frontal botting, short low hairline, webbed neck, epicanthal folds and small eyes suggestive of uh, Fanconi anemia which is a type of a bone marrow failure syndrome.
other pointers you can get is oral candidiasis suggestive of uh, hiv gum hypertrophy suggesting leukemias and knuckle hyperpigmentation sign of b12 deficiency megaloblastic anemia or they can be purpura and petechiae suggestive of superficial bleed due to thrombocytopenia the bleed due to thrombocytopenia can be severe also like intracranial bleeds or conjunctival bleeds as shown in the picture in this slide we have differential of pancytopenia with hepatosplenomegaly like in case of acute leukemia infections and hypersplenism and without hepatosplenomegaly as seen in case of aplastic anemia inherited bone marrow failure syndromes or megaloblastic anemia now let's move to the investigation we will be needing a complete blood count and with peripheral smear in CBC, the value of MCV point towards whether the cells are macrocytic, normocytic or microcytic. You can narrow down the differentials accordingly. Now, the next step is to see the retic count. Retic count is the number of uh, immature RBC that is produced by the bone marrow. So, it is actually indicating the status and functioning of the bone marrow. The retic count can be normal to increase in case of autoimmune condition and can be decreased in case of aplastic anemia and bone marrow failure syndromes. Now the retic count is not just a count but it is expressed as a percentage of new cells upon the old RBCs. Okay, so it can be misleading in case of anemic patients. So we need to calculate the corrected retic count. Now the next investigation that is the peripheral smear can help in narrow down the differentials like presence of hypersegmented neutrophils seen in case of megaloblastic anemia or decreased cell line case seen in case of aplastic anemia or there may be presence of abnormal blast cells in the uh, peripheral smear suggestive of leukemia. Bone marrow examination is crucial in case of pancytopenia because it will tell the actual status of bone marrow whether it's hypercellular or hypocellular. Additional testing that is done in case of pancytopenia is vitamin B12 and folate level, HPLC, HIV, hepatitis B and C serology, workup for TB, autoimmune workup, LFT and infectious workup like CMB, parvovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, workup for PNH and HLH. Hope you found it useful. Thank you so much for your patient listening.